Yes. 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 In the same order that we just practiced it. There we go. Do you see me talking on this? Cut. That's okay. All right, guys, let's focus up for a second. No. So we come to this time now that we're going to have a lot of fun right now. And I hope that tonight that we can be joyous, excited, that we get to witness the 290th best worship band in America. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was sitting there paying attention to me. <laughs> Let's give it up for R367. I did not okay that. I did not okay that. But guys, this is my favorite time of the day. We're doing our challenge of 28 days of worship. I challenge you when you sing these songs to really think what the words are saying. We sang I Exalt Thee on Sunday, and I kind of noticed that the younger generation didn't get into the song as much as the older generation did. And I kind of realized because those are the songs that we grew up on. And we would look at the words and we would meditate on the words through our times of growing up. And those that song hit a lot of us. I challenge you when you worship today, just don't sing the song. Just don't raise your hand because you can raise your hand. But read those words. Because this is what you are professing to God in this moment. You are in conversation. You are telling him, you are praising him with these words. David stood and he, and he had the most beautiful, he was the most wordsmith and he spilled so many beautiful words to Jesus, and to God, I mean to God in worship. So be a David. Focus on the words. Some of these words is maybe how God is speaking to you tonight. There's not, there's not just a random occurrence why these songs are played. Sometimes it's God working through Jordan to t pick the songs that are going to speak to you tonight. So let's have a night of celebration. Let's worship with all of our heart and all of our soul. And let's have a good old time tonight, all right? All right, let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much. I thank you for what you're going to do tonight. I thank you for what you have done. God, I just ask that you help breathe life into this group. Let them know that this is the moment that you are with them. Wrap them with your aroma. Wrap them with your excitement. And wrap them with your passion. And at this moment, when we come together as a group, we are your sons and your daughters. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>
let go in every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go. Lord, you never let go of me.
vir oh ah Jesus you won't you learn until you have it oh Father, come be the fire inside us. Be the only thing that burns in our hearts, God, with our passion. Be seated first before anything else. Help us see past all the distractions, all the idols that we put before you. Teach us how to put you first. Father, we thank you for this time you've given us to come with you, come to you in music and song. I thank you for all the hearts in this room tonight, Lord, who are truly surrendered to you and everything that you have for them tonight. I pray that you would bless Ryan, Father. Speak through him. Open our hearts and our minds, Father. Prepare us, Father, we may know more about you. That you would take us to deeper levels of your goodness and grace and your knowledge, Father. We love you and we thank you for everything you're doing in our lives and everything you're going to do tonight. In your name we pray. Test one, there we go, perfect. Everybody there? Maybe. Hey, uh, can I get the other one? Because this one's jacked. Can I get the other one? Test one. All right, there we go. Thank you, sir. All right, guys. So I, was, I heard about this guy named Bernie who records sound and film for film and television. He was saying in 1968, in order to get one hour of natural sound, with like with no airplanes, cars, beavers, chainsaws, or any of it is, it would take him 15 hours of recording time. And he was saying that today, to get an hour of undisturbed time, it takes 2,000 hours of recording to get complete silence.
Silence is not a fun time. Perfect point when we were have technical difficulties. You just couldn't sit and be silent. I was hoping while we were going to have a moment of silence, I was going to have technical difficulties, that somebody like our lovely Colin would do with what he did. My question to you and I ask you is, and this is where we can be talkative, is why does silence bother you? Yes, in the back. Because nothing happens. You think you are alone. that again? Sometimes it's uncomfortable to be with your own thoughts. I like that. Go ahead. That's a good one. Next. Yes. We're used to not having any distractions. So one of the questions that was asked on there is, what are some of the noise in your life? So go ahead and give me some examples of noise in your life. Go ahead. Headphones. Okay. In the back? People talking to you. Harrison? The video you're watching on your phone. It's a good one. There's a, I have to, I'll get to you in a second. There's a period of time in my life that I have to put the phone on Do Not Disturb because the clan that I'm in on Clash of the Clans, they're always like fighting and it's just beat. Oh, wait, never mind. I mean, my sports alert was always letting me know what's going on. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. The little brother's arguing. Yes. Another question for you. Do you ever intentionally surround yourself with noise? Yes? If so, why do we do this? Yes? in the back so you don't feel alone did you have your hand up too did you have your hand up I don't have to think about certain things I will tell you that I am the world's worst at overthinking things uh, my brain runs 120,000 miles per hour when I'm left alone to my own uh uh, issues, to be honest with you. Uh, if I'm in the house, <laughs> he still looked to me, so I guess I had to keep his face on it. Um, when I find myself with our dogs are not there, and it's just me in the house, I find that's when I fight uh, with myself the most. When I overthink things, when I start fighting with my thoughts. Um, I'm going to open it up real quick. Uh, on the seven, and it was actually about seven minutes of silence. Uh, what was running through your head? Why are we doing this? What are you doing? Go ahead. Okay. Yes. It was going to, we were having an issue with that. Uh, I'm sorry. I planned it out. It was a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. What? Go ahead. You liked it. So that's my question is, why is it awkward? Change is not easy. So let's, I'll get to you in a second. So let's talk about that. So when we come to our world, 
we see, and I really love the scripture, we see that, it, um, that God is in the Old Testament. We, we've seen through our studies that he makes his presence known through just big events, right? We see with the burning bush that he set that bush on fire. That's a big event. It probably was making noise. We see with Moses back with the, uh, back with the Ten Commandments, the lightning, the thunder, and all the crashing and, and the powerfulness of God. But when we see when we see here in the scripture, uh, right here it says, "The Lord said, go and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass you." So Elijah's probably thinking, "All right, I gotta be ready for this. I gotta be ready to see the big the big lights, you know, the big you know Vegas light strip. I'm ready for this. God's gonna speak to me. He's gonna do great things." Uh, the great, and then we see that the great and powerful wind tore the mountain apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. We see after the wind, there was an earthquake. How many people have ever been in an earthquake? Anybody? All right. I grew up in earthquakes. The first earthquake I ever experienced was a 7.2. I I was laying on my grandparents' bed. Or not bed, sorry. My grandparents' couch. And uh, I I had just woken up, and I was like, I have to go to the bathroom. But I'm really don't want, do you ever like know that moment when you're laying in bed and you really got to go to the bathroom, but you don't want to get out of bed? So you contemplate that moment, should I pee or should I not? So I'm having this moment and I'm laying in bed saying, I don't really want to get up. And so I have convinced myself that I'm not going to go pee at that moment. All of a sudden the lights started shaking in this noise. And then the best way I can explain it, it sounded like a locomotive was coming towards my window. And this was an old wooden house in Northern California. It was made in about 1920. It was a nice house. It started shaking. And it just the roaring power. I mean, I cannot explain. Just think of the loudest locomotive. And I felt like it was coming through the window. And the house was shaking and all these crazy things. And things were breaking. Luckily, I would have been standing by the toilet when this happened. And a big glass Listerine bottle fell above the toilet and probably would have hit me. So... I was pretty lucky, but it was so loud. I cannot explain just the majesty, the most powerfulness in a, in a, in a big earthquake. Like the little earthquakes we get here, the rrr, that's nothing. You ride a 7.2 that knocks out 100 gallons of water out of your pool, then you know what's going on. After the earthquake came, and uh, after, but yet the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earth came, and, uh, after the earthquake came fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire came, the sound of sheer silence. And the Lord was, God was in the silence. So many times, how does this apply to us? So many times that we look for God in the noise of our life. Sometimes he speaks to us in the noise. 28 days of worship challenge is that I'm asking you to look for songs that God speaks to you in. That, that pricks your heart, that you say, man, I like what that's saying. But so many times that we as Christians, we, we get confused with what God does and we look for the big things. We look for the burning bush. We look for that moment. And sometimes we realize that God is in the silence. Some of you got up at early, early in the morning at the retreat. You walked out and you did some of your worship music, but there was a moment probably that you were silent to hear the beauty of nature. I have deer hunted four times in my life and I've never seen a deer. But the coolest thing about the deer hunting was listening to just pure silence. I thought this was really interesting. It went really too fast. But scholars struggle to explain that God spoke in, in, in sound of sheer silence. So they translated the Hebrew phrase to still small voice or gentle whisper. It's really funny because the scientists themselves, the, not the scientists, but the scholars, struggled to put God in a box. In, in they tried to put him in a box. They tried to control him. But there was only silence. And that's when God met, or that's when Elijah met God. So tonight it's going to be a, not my longer lesson where I preach to you and yell at you, but I just, I challenge you to think about silence. We see, that Jesus, we see that Jesus was a pure example of silence when he went, and he went away, and he prayed in silence. 
We see later that he prays, that he says, come and I will give you rest. But how can we be rest? How can we get rest if we are in a noisy situation? For me to fall asleep, I have to have this really creepy music, the sleep app, and it goes... Ask Lauren. She says it's like a crazy monastery in our, in our bedroom. I go sleep before her so she doesn't have to listen to it. But how do we truly get rest if we do not be still and listen? One of my favorite scriptures, it says, Be still and know that I am the Lord your God. I'm going to ask you this question. Why would God want us to be still? I am not a component of a person saying that you can't listen to music or do whatever you do to talk to God. But what I am asking is for a moment, for, for a period of our life, that we come to silence and to focus on Him. Because everything that is noise in our life, if it's our music, if it's our parents, if it's school, if it's dance, if it's baseball, if it's wrestling, if it's whatever it is, all these activities in our life is noise. Sometimes that we just need to turn down the noise and listen to God speak to us. Number one complaint in this group, and I will say it too, is God's just not talking to me. God's not speaking to me. And I ask, are we truly listening for him? That was awkward. I decided I had to go pick up Chandler today for church. And I decided usually on Wednesday nights, I jam out to worship music to get me pumped for you guys. Like I got dance moves and everything. And it's like my, it's my, it's my, it's literally my routine. Like I've been doing it since I've done youth ministry. Like people in Southwest Little Rock thought I was the craziest person. Cause it's like, my God, oh my God. And I'm just rocking out. And I have like choreographed moves with my best friend, Alex. Like at certain points of the song, we like both bounce. Like that was our pump up thing. So I said, I'm going to go pick up, uh, Chandler, and I'm going to go in complete silence. Now that's from here to the Freshman Academy and the time it had to wait for him to come out from the locker room. I thought I was going to punch myself in the face. I found myself grabbing my phone while I was sitting in the parking lot looking through Facebook. I found myself thinking about things that I needed that really at that time did not need to be focused on. It is hard to sit in the presence of God and to wait. But sometimes that's what God wants us to do, is to submit, to obey, and listen. Think of the powerful, I want you guys to close your eyes for a second. I want you guys to think of these powerful words, and I want you to just for, for a few moments focus on these words. Be still and know that I am God. Keep your eyes, eyes closed. I'm going to ask you some questions to ponder about. Can can we lower the lights a little bit? <clears throat> Do sometimes you avoid silence because you are afraid? Or are you actually afraid of what God might say to you? Are you ever alone? Or do you always need somebody around?
does my schedule, my time, my life look like a person who wants to hear God's voice? What are some things in your daily life that you could change to eliminate some noise? Is it possible that you have been searching for God's voice in the wind, the earthquake, and the fires? Are you ready to speak to him in silence? God is speaking to us. Where do we go from here? I think we need to reflect on that one question. Does your life reflect a person who desperately wants to be in communication with him? If you wish that God's voice would be louder in your life, and we have to eliminate all the noise that makes it hard to hear him. In this moment of silence, will you, I, I challenge you this week to find a time to be silent. The ones that have been praying to God this week for, for issues, for, for requests, for things that are just not going right, take some time to be in silence with him. If it's meditating with your eyes closed, if it's reading the Bible, if it's getting up early and watching the sun rise, actively try to search for his voice. Because unfortunately, like many of us believe, God will not talk to us like this. Hello, I am God. Be still and know that I am him. But he will speak to you through the silence. So where do we go from here? We just got to try it. We got to do it. What we're going to do for the next few minutes of worship and of this lesson is, I didn't have a lot. I just, I thought that the lesson of silence spoke for itself. I hope you liked something new. It was different. It was uncomfortable. Um, I'm trying to push myself as a speaker slash silent button pusher and um, give you guys different things to think about. But for this moment when the worship te- or when Jordan or whoever comes up to, to do this song for worship or for communion, I wanted, we did this Sunday, we did communion last. And I want us to spend the next 15 minutes or however. Uh, we usually get done by 8.10, so you guys have a few minutes. To break up, uh, spend some time in silence as a group, uh, pray for each other. If you have requests, tell them about it. Pray as a group, and then at, and as, as one, as a group. Jordan, is there a way we can do it without the worship band and just you? Because I want them to have a time to kind of worship. I'm sorry. I called you earlier today to discuss this, and you didn't pick up a phone. But that's okay. I'll talk for a little bit more. You would have been caught off surprise if you would have picked up your phone. So... So I want you guys to, I want you, <laughs> thank you, Rachel, for protecting him. I want you to spend this moment to break up in a group, pray with each other, spend some time in silence. I know he's going to play, but there's a purpose. Yes. Okay. But when you do communion, I want you at the end as a group to take it together. First, the bread. 
and then the, the juice. And I want you to realize that God broke his body for you and he bled for your salvation. That no matter how bad or how dirty we are, that he's there for us. God just texted me. So the question is, why does God speak to us quietly? The answer is that God spoke to us in his full power. We would die. We as humans ask God not to speak to us in Exodus 20, verse 19. Thank you, God. So in this moment, I just ask that we, we commune together, we fellowship. I challenge you to pray. Pray with each other. Lay it on the table. Before I take this communion, before I commune with you, these are my struggles. These are my joys. This is what I'm going through. Can you as a family pray with me? Before, before we can even be what we're going to be, we have to be a family. So I give you the next 10 to 20 minutes to pray, to commune, to do it as a family. Uh, the leaders will float around and do it with whoever they want to. But I want you guys to take charge. You break up in your groups. And let's do something different. Let's not do the same groups. Let's try to mix it up a little bit. Cool? All right. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this moment, God. I ask that in, in my silence, in my crazy ideas, God, that I express what you wanted to be said tonight. God, we are so thankful and so blessed to be here.